I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist with over 15 years experience helping people build their families. And today I'm gonna to teach you about endocrine disruptors, what they are and why it's important to avoid them. So today we're gonna to learn about endocrine disruptors. I want you to understand what they are, how common they are, and some tips on how to start to learn more about them and decrease your exposure to them because it's really important for your health. So number one, what is an endocrine disruptor? An endocrine disruptor is any chemical that you're exposed to that is made outside of your body. So it's an exogenous chemical that impacts functions within our body, typically through the hormonal system. And so endocrine disruptors can act like hormones. They can attach to receptors that other hormones in our body are trying to attach to, and they can really disrupt how our body is working. Number two, how common are endocrine disruptors? Honestly, they're everywhere. Endocrine disruptors are in pesticides that's going on our food. It's in plastics that are throughout our oceans. They're in the products that we're using on our skin um, and our laundry. Um, we're exposed to them from food. They really are everywhere. I know it can be overwhelming to learn about this at first, but it's really important. And if you decrease your exposure to them, you can honestly improve not only your reproductive health, but but your overall health and well being. Number three, what are some common endocrine disruptors? So, pesticides, BPA or bisphenol A, phthalates, parabens. These are some endocrine disruptors you may have heard of. So, when you buy a water bottle and it says BPA free, why is that label on there? Because we've learned that bisphenol A or BPA, um, when we're exposed to it, can impact our overall health. We know that high levels of BPA have been associated with uh, poor fertility, uh, increased risk of miscarriage, um, increased risk of obesity, diabetes, even associated with some cancer risks. So BPA free is important. It's not the whole story, but that's something that you may have heard of. Um, pesticides. So pesticides do a great job of getting pests off our fruit and vegetables, but those chemicals can stay on the food that we eat and they can impact our overall health and well-being when we ingest them. So there are endocrine disruptors that you've heard of. These are some common ones and it's really important to learn about. Number four, why is this important? It's important because if you take action, you can decrease your exposure to the chemicals. And I know it's uncomfortable to think about, you must think like, well, if it was really bad, companies would not make products with these chemicals or the government would limit production or what we're exposed to. And I understand that, but right now, just the, with the system that we have, it's really not, not happening. So a great sort of example to shine a light on the overall issue is the cosmetics industry. So cosmetics can be beauty products, you know, shampoo, um, lotion that we put on our skin, mascara, lipstick, um, shaving cream. And in the United States, the last time a law was passed to limit a chemical in a cosmetic or beauty product was in 1938. In the United States, chemicals are often assumed to be safe until they're proven unsafe. It's actually harder to get a chemical out of a product than it is to get it onto the market. And for example, other countries actually have more limitations and laws limiting some endocrine disruptors and cosmetics. Canada limits over 500 chemicals, Europe up to 1500. So um, depending on where you live and depending on what products you're exposed to, it can actually impact your overall health and well being. And so you need to have this knowledge in order to choose products that are less toxic. So I started researching this and really trying to answer my own patients' questions and read the literature and research myself. And the data is definitely there and we can make small changes in our everyday life that dramatically decrease our exposure. And it's really people with the highest levels of BPA and phthalates in their system that it impacts their health the most. And when we start to choose different products and decrease our exposure to these things, you can actually see a difference. So we can actually make a difference in our everyday life. So my last point of this video, this is just an introductory video. There's so much to learn, but let me give you some quick tips that you could start doing today to decrease your exposure. Number one, 
no plastic water bottle. So even if it says BPA free, I tell my patients there's BPA through Z. Um, there's lots of different bisphenols and other chemicals in plastics that get into our water. So choose glass or stainless steel. As a matter of fact, try to number two, just get plastic away from your food as much as possible. Throw out or recycle, please, the plastic food containers um, that you store your leftovers in. Use glass or stainless steel, okay? Don't heat your food in the microwave in a plastic container, okay? Use glass. So just think about getting heat and food and plastic. You don't wanna mix those things, okay? Number three, think about the products that you're using. There's wonderful databases like ewg.org or Environmental Working Group, Think Dirty um, and Made Safe. These are databases that you can look up the products that you're using, your shampoo, your makeup, your laundry detergent and see what chemicals are there, how they rate in that database, and they can often give you alternatives that are less toxic. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory video to endocrine disruptors. There's a lot to learn, and I'm constantly sharing information on this on Instagram, on TikTok. You can see my blog post on endocrine disruptors and subscribe to my newsletter to stay up to date. Please like, share, or comment on this video and stay tuned for more.